everyone, I'm Stephanie Kaloje. We are here at the iTron Inspire event in beautiful San Antonio, Texas, and I'm joined here with Tom Daytrick, CEO of iTron. Welcome, Tom. Very nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining me. So, you know, you had an amazing keynote yesterday. You're right. Um, <laughs> but you talked a lot about the challenges uh, that utilities are facing, especially uh, with the energy transition. So I'd, I'd love to just get your thoughts on, you know, what utilities are faced with and, and how they can really prepare for the energy transition. When I think about the energy transition, I think there's two main components to it. The, the first one, obviously, is moving towards a cleaner, uh, more sustainable future. So integrating renewables in, into the grid. So there, there's the generation side all the way down to uh, distributed energy resources at the edge of the grid. But that's one piece of the puzzle. The, the other piece of the puzzle, I think, is really important to remember has to do with uh, reliability and the affordability of the solution that we put in place. So at the end of the day, utilities have an obligation to make sure that the lights turn on when you flip the switch and the water flows and the house is warm in the winter. And in order to do that, while you're integrating renewables, you've got to keep your feet firmly on the ground when it comes to uh, the reliability side of it. So th that is the challenge, and it is expresses itself in terms of climate disruption, more floods and fires and storms or droughts or uh, ice storms. doesn't matter where in the world you are, it's happening. It expresses itself in terms of infrastructure challenges. It's getting older. It's uh, providing less security from a cybersecurity standpoint. And consumers, they're changing their behavior as well. So those are the challenges that utilities are up against and what that means from an energy transition perspective. Yeah, you talked a lot about those, the consumers and even the prosumer, right? Where if, you know, they're putting on solar panels or they have their electric vehicles and, you, you know, did the, the great demonstration, it, it really changes things for utilities. And I think really that collaboration is, is key, which you, you spoke about. So um, what about, you know, gas and water utilities as well? They, they've, they're faced with challenges also. Absolutely. And, and the energy transition, while we largely speak about it in electricity terms, it is an electricity only thing. Um, gas, making it uh, safer. There's uh, certainly uh, uh, ways to think about uh, consumer conservation and, and efficiency programs when it comes to gas. But gas from a generation standpoint is fundamental to energy reliability. Uh, during peak cold times, gas generates three times more uh, warming power th than what we get out of the electricity grid in total today. So I think gas from a generation perspective is around for a long period of time. And it is absolutely a vital part of the uh, the transition. Switching over to water, okay, we could probably survive a few days without the internet. It may feel hard at, at times, My but kids uh, won't like that very much. But they may yeah. not. They may not. But we don't survive without water. That's not a joking matter. So how do we make sure we take care of that very precious resource by reducing leaks, by improving conservation, uh, and think about it through the lens of the nexus between energy and water. In the western part of the United States, uh, close to 20 percent of the electricity that is consumed is cleaning and pumping mm. water. Uh, we had the two CEOs of uh, CPS and SAWS on stage, and, and, and Robert joked that he was Rudy's largest customer. That was the water utility uh, speaking to, to the electricity utility. And that's true very many places. So that nexus between the two, any water we can save, any conservation we have there, only reduces the electricity load. Yeah, and it was really interesting to see how great they collaborate together. I mean, and I've not, I don't know that I've seen that before. So it was very respectful, frankly. It's spectacular. Yeah. I mean, we, we we're blessed to, to have been present in the San Antonio community for a long time, but their relationship really has developed a new business model with a shared network. And we've been able to replicate that in many other utilities. But I think holding them up as a shining example of you can do something good for your community, good for your, your investors, uh, and, and use the technology that's available in a very different way. Yeah. What are your, what are your thoughts on hydrogen? I know we, we talked a lot about distributed energy resources, of course, and solar and wind. And I mean, hydrogen seems to be, you know, something that's really going to be a big part of the transition as well. I think that certainly has an opportunity. Yeah. There's plenty of technical challenges as well as as, as cost challenges uh, w with hydrogen. I think that that will take some time, but I think we have to enable it and think about it in that respect. So from an ITRON perspective, the Intellis meter, our latest generation, can handle up to about 20% hydrogen uh, out of the box uh, in terms of what we are doing today. We've got to make sure, as you would do that, 
uh, safety is is maintained and making sure that uh, all of the systems piping, all of the connections are, are, are tight to be able to handle hydrogen, which is a much smaller uh, molecule. That's something to, to think about. But I think it's absolutely one of the tools in the toolbox. And as we think about energy transition, I think we have to think about it in terms of an all of the above strategy. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, do you think that utilities are prepared, you know, for the additional distributed energy resources that are being added? You know, what are, you know, what are they, what are they dealing with and how can they be, how can they be prepared? I don't know that anyone could be fully prepared <laughs> given the, the, the complexity of the problem that we're, we're dealing with. I, I see utilities leaning in and, and working hard to, to bring this on board. People are not burying their head in the sand, which really would be dangerous. But I think we are all struggling to, to keep up. Fortunately, we have a lot of tools that we can deploy. And I think the really important part of the tools that we would want to put in play We've got to make sure they're agile and flexible. You, how you think you are going to use them today and how you will use them 10 years from now are probably very, very different. So if you are going to uh, uh, be able to deploy a durable asset and use it over a long period of time, let's think in terms of agility and, mm. and, uh, and flexibility so that we have a multi-purpose tool we can put to use in the appropriate way at the appropriate time. Yeah, it's that, that flexibility, reliability, uh, it lets you spoke about and affordability, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so last question, um, what was your favorite part of iTron Inspire this year? This is my first time and I've been very, okay, very well, impressed. welcome first timer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, it, I probably am a broken record. So uh, what, every time I get this question, I answer it the same and it's a genuine and sincere answer. It is the collaboration. It is the ability to uh, talk to 200 and some of my clients in a four-day period. It is having those clients and our technology partners and ourselves interact to figure out how to solve these these challenges that are in front of us. You get so much value out of it over such a short period of time. It's it's truly a spectacular event, and, and I'm sure I am parochial because it, it happens to be a, an iTron event, but uh, I haven't found a microcosm anywhere where you can get the same type of, of density of really high quality conversations. No, I mean, the, the amount of knowledge that is in these, you know, four walls, so to speak, is is, is amazing. It's a, It's been great to see and I've been lucky to be a part of it. So absolutely. Well, please come back and join us next year. I will indeed. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, we'll see you soon. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.